Jake Bernstein is from Jake Bernstein on Futures. Now, Jake Bernstein is a publisher of the Jake Bernstein Weekly Futures Trading Letter, Bernstein on Stocks, the Letter of Long-Term Trends, and COT Analysis. Jake has written more than 42 books and research studies on futures trading, stock trading, trader psychology, and economic forecasting. His articles by Bernstein have been appeared in Futures Magazine, Money Maker Magazine, Stocks and Commodities, Barron's Financial Weekly, uh, Stocks, Futures and Options Magazine, and Farm Futures. We're pleased to have Jake join us in our webinar today, so let me go ahead. I'm going to turn it over to Jake right now. Once again, Jake Bernstein from Jake Bernstein on Futures. So can everyone hear me? Yes, thank you, Jake. Good. So I want to thank everyone for being here today. Thanks for the opportunity to be a presenter. And uh, how much time do I have? 45 minutes? Yeah, you have 45 minutes. Okay. So I've got some really good news for everyone here. I will not yell at you. I will not scream at you. I have nothing to offer you. I have nothing to sell you. If you're interested in what I do, you can go to my website, jakebernstein.com, and see what I do. Since I've been trading for 44 years, I know what I'm talking about. And I will try and teach you some ideas today that are specific. So I'm not going to engage in anything general. I'm not going to give you looks like, might be, could, or interpretation. I'm going to give you 100% objectivity. And one of the things that I've learned through long and hard experience is the fact that unless you have completely objective methods, whether you learn them from me or somebody else, unless they're rule-based, unless you have a rule for everything, it's not going to work for you. So, and this is the easiest job in the world. On the other hand, it's the most difficult job in the world. I trade practically every day. I'm a real trader, but I trade sensibly and I try to capture reasonably large moves, but these moves have to be based on rules, and they have to be based on probabilities, and they have to be based on track records. So let me see, I need to get my pointer tools. Hold on one second. Where would that be? Hang on one moment, please. Can everyone see my pointer here that I'm using on my presentation? Is that a yes or a no? Can everybody hear me? Okay, I'm not getting any answers here. Hang on one second, please. <coughs> I'll figure this out. Uh, Jake, do you see the chat box that's on the, the prompt? There should be a se section for questions. I see that. Yeah, see we, chat, chat yeah we're getting a bunch of questions coming through that they can't Already, see. Uh, okay. Um, I see the chat box. I don't see any questions. Uh, if you go under view, view at the top, and then you look under that, there'll be one for... Okay, view, and I want to look at what... Uh, questions. Make sure questions is checked. Questions is checked. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions, but I see Fausto's. Uh, I see a link to Fausto. That's all I see. Okay. Uh, I, what I'll do is I will send you messages as we get the questions coming in. Okay. I just want to make sure that everyone sees my pointer. Can you see my pointer now? Yes, everybody can see and hear you. Perfect. Right, cool. That's fine. Very good. Appreciate that. Okay, so look, let's make it really simple. I like things to be 100% objective. So if someone tries to tell me something, someone tries to teach me something, I'm not going to engage in interpretation. I want to know the answer. One of the things that you will find is that a lot of traders and investors are becoming disillusioned with the market because things like this happen. You have a stock today, Intercept Pharmaceuticals, up 45% in one day. The stock closed about two something yesterday, opens today about $150, $200 higher, and then sells off and you get all kinds of crazy stuff like that. So people get very concerned. They look at it and they say, how come I can't do that? How come I can't make that move? Well, the chances are most of the people who made and people who bought in the opening today, which was right over here, if I can find my mouse 
right over here, are very unhappy right now. Then you've got moves that are very similar to what happened today in Kate Spade. So Kate Spade announces earnings. They open about three and a half dollars higher. They proceed to go eight dollars lower. The good news about this type of trade is that this was a trade that was based on rules. It's called the gap trade. I call it the mother of all gap trades because that's what happened today. When a stock or commodity opens higher, a gap definition, opening above the high of the previous day, and then trades down into the range of the previous day, like so, it becomes a short sale and you have a profit target, you have a trading objective, you have a risk, you have a stop, you have a follow through procedure. Everything is rule based. So just to share a couple of ideas with you, what I want to show you today is based completely on rules. So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at some rule based methods. I'm going to show you some of my best stuff and as I say, you don't need to buy anything from me. If I can sell you on my ideas, that would be all that I need to do. After trading for 44 years and seeing people all over the world losing money, speaking at 700 conferences all over the world, I know that people are dying for knowledge and sometimes that knowledge is right there ready for the taking. You just have to know where to go to get it. So who am I? Why am I doing this today? I think who I am is covered on the introduction. I've written 44 books. I'm a real trader, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to bore you with how great I am, but that's not the issue here. The issue is can you learn anything from me? So we know that the nature of the markets is that it's difficult to make money. The question always becomes who wants you to win, who wants you to lose? I am not convinced that brokerage houses want you to win. I'm convinced that many people in this business who are professionals are under the impression that if you are educated as a trader, you're going to end up taking money from them. In other words, they're not going to be as successful. If you're successful, I don't subscribe to that belief. I believe there are things that everyone can do in the market to make money. It's just a question of doing the right things. It's a question of not overextending yourself. It's a question of knowing what to do. So who wants you to win? I want you to win. I don't consider anybody competition. There's enough money to go around. Why? Because there are enough people coming into the markets every day who don't know what they're doing, who will lose their money to the market and make it easier for us. And please excuse me. I'm sitting here in my offices this morning in Santa Cruz, California right near the tourist train that passes by about this time of the day. So they've got perfect timing. They always do this when I'm doing the webinar. So who wants you to lose? Most professionals in this business don't care if you win or lose. They'd rather have you lose. So the fate of the typical trader is very simple. The fate of the typical trader is that they will lose money. So what I'm going to show you today, some ideas about how you can avoid being the typical. Here's what you need. So save this list. You need to be objective and clear. Do not engage in looks like. Anytime you start to interpret anything, looks like the market wants to go up, looks like the market wants to go down, looks like a bearish report, looks like a bullish report, looks like the market is going to turn around. Don't do looks like. Those are the two dirtiest words that you can use when it comes to trading. Number two, you need a trading model. I will show you that. You need specific entry rules and exit rules. You need to have a profit maximizing strategy. You know, it's really great if you can day trade and make 200 bucks a day. If your goal is to make 200 bucks a day and you quit when you've reached 200 bucks, that's no good because you can be right 20 times in a row, make 200 bucks a day and give all that money back plus more on one losing trade. So it's not enough to make a certain amount of money every day. You have to make the most that you can possibly make and in order to do that, you need a specific structure. Discipline. What's that? I always hear people say, hey, no wonder you can't make money. You don't have discipline. Where are you going to get discipline? Are you going to get discipline from a trainer? Are you going to get discipline from a uh, book? Are you going to get discipline from my book, The Investor's Quotient, which I wrote in the 1980s? And even though it was one of the best-selling books on trader psychology, the fact of the matter is you're not going to get discipline out of that book. Discipline comes from confidence. Confidence comes from only one place, and that is winning. You can't win if you don't have all these things in place. I'm going to show you a couple of things that will help you win if you follow through. So you have to have the follow through and one of those follow throughs is you've got to see the big picture. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you have to avoid micromanaging by which I mean sitting in front of the stupid computer and living and dying with every tick. There are ways to do that and believe me, I'm not against day trading. I do it all the time. It's just a question of how you're going to do it. So let's go on and take a look. 
if you lack discipline because you don't have confidence, it's not going to work for you. The only way you're going to get confidence is to have methods that work. The only way you're going to have methods that work is to find methods that work. The only way you're going to find methods that work is to stop believing most of the nonsense that's out there. The only way to stop believing most of the nonsense that's out there is to ask for track records. Let me see it. I encourage everybody here today not to believe anything I'm telling you until you see it with your own eyes. So no matter what I tell you, check it out. Don't believe me. I encourage you because the only way you're going to really have confidence is to say, hey, I saw what Jake showed me today. I went back. I looked at the historical records, and it's true. Now you you have the beginning of <clears throat> So what do I mean Santa Cruz, California? I often give presentations in Sunnyvale at some of the big tech firms. They call me up and ask me to come and speak to their employees and so forth. And I run a traders group in the San Francisco Bay Area. So we have hundreds of people who come to these meetings and they sit there and they listen to the ideas and I say, listen guys, you live in the technology center of the world. You've got something incredible called a computer. You've got something incredible called data. All you have to do is write a little program or use some of the trading software that has back testing capability and ask the question, does it work? But if you're going to sit in front of the computer and make judgments that are not rule based, no matter how much training you have, if it's interpretive, everyone's going to look at it in a different way. So you don't want to interpret. So let me ask you a question. Are you dealing in reality? You need to make decisions based on what you know, not on what you think, because what you think you know is probably not right. What you really know is based on facts. So we always want to deal in facts. Can you use information? What kind of information? But hey, you know what? <clears throat> if you're an artist, you're not a trader. If you're psychic and you're a good trader, I can't teach you that. You can't learn that. You need to be psychic. So if you don't know what you're doing and if you're doing it based on interpretation, even though you think you know what you're doing, it's wrong. I don't want to double talk and give you a bunch of philosophical BS. What I want to do is show you something that's really clear and consistent. So what happens to the typical trader? Typical trader doesn't understand the rules of the game. One of the rules of the game is that you can lose money five or six or seven times in a row and still have a good outcome. But if you don't have the capital to withstand that to draw down, it's not going to work for you and you're going to be wiped out before you have an opportunity for your trading methodology to work. So look, a lot of people have a lot of information these days. The key is not to have a lot of information, it's to have good information. If you have too many opinions and too much information, hey, the internet is a wonderful thing. If you punch in day trading on the internet, you're going to get literally, no exaggeration, one million hits. How are you going to separate the nonsense from the facts? How are you going to separate the information from who's trying to sell you on something and who's trying to show you something real? What I want to do is show you something real. And by the way, You're not going to learn to trade in a chat room because when you're in a chat room talking to other traders, most of whom are losers, most of whom you have no idea what they are, who they are, what they're doing there, are they there to promote a position that they have? You're not going to learn anything except other people's opinions. You don't want opinions. I don't want opinions. Show me the facts. So I look at all the stuff that's out there and I ask the question, what works for me? Judgment doesn't work for me when it comes to the markets. I can talk to a trader, to an individual, and for five minutes I can tell you intuitively, based on what they say and based on the questions I ask, if they have a likelihood of being successful. But when it comes to using judgment or intuition into markets, my judgment absolutely sucks. I can't do it. I don't want to use the Edsel method. If you remember the Edsel, my age, you remember the Edsel. If you want to find out what people want, ask a million people. Put all of theirs together, all of their ideas together in one room, in one, in one package, and make a car that reflects everything that people want, and you're going to end up with a loser. 
I don't use GAN. It's not specific enough. It's not rule-based. I don't use Elliott Wave. No offense intended to anyone who uses these, but if you put 10 Elliott Wave traders in a room and ask them all the same question without consulting with each other, you're going to get nine different answers. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll get five different answers. I don't do chart patterns. Chart patterns are subject to interpretation. I don't do traditional moving averages. The probability, as I will show you, is extremely low. I don't follow the news. CNBC, if you know how to use it, with specific rules, which I've described in my recent book, The Complete Day Trader 2, that's a good thing if you know how to use it. But it has to be rule-based. Fibonacci doesn't work for me. Overbought and oversold. What's that? Is there a definition? If there's no definition, or if you say, it looks like it's oversold, or the RSI is low, that doesn't mean anything to me, because how low is low? They don't work for me because they're not rule-based. So I've said a lot about rule-based. What is rule-based? Let's take a look at a track record. <clears throat> People talk about the 200-day moving average. If the price goes below the 200-day moving average, it's going to go down. If the price of the stock goes above the 200-day moving average, it's going to go up. Well, that's an opinion. Look at the facts. If we go to the computer and we ask the question, take the S&P. Look at the 200-day moving average. Buy every time you go above the 200-day moving average. Sell short or reverse your position if it goes below the 200-day moving average. These are the results. 72 trades, 29% accuracy. That's 29% accuracy. Eight consecutive losing trades, three consecutive winning trades. But it makes money. Yes, it does. It'll make money if you are happy with 21 winners out of 73, 72 trades, and if you're okay with $82,000 in drawdown before you make money, that doesn't work for me. What about something like this? The 200-day moving average in IBM. Well, 18% accuracy, $52,000 in, in profit and in, in losses, eight, consecutive, eight total winners, and so forth and so forth. No, no, please don't do that. How about this? One of the currency systems that I've developed. Look at the difference. Completely rule-based, but we're able to test it. We're able to see with 86% accuracy. It's only $299 a trade. The trades only last about two to three days. You've got 21 consecutive winners, three consecutive losers looking at the bottom. You can see that. That works for me. And if the rules are completely clear, and I know the rules in advance, and I know my risk in advance, and I know my average profit per trade in advance, and I know where to get in, and I know where to get out, to the very instant, to the very minute, that's what I need. So if I were to teach you how to trade, I'd say, let's look at some rules. Let's look at some specific procedures and follow those rule-based procedures all the time. But let's not do it unless we know the record. So here's a record that spans over 305 trades going back about 10 years. And so now we're looking at the kind of information I like to have. Are there any other things that are rule-based? Yes, there are. If I go back to what I showed you earlier today about the Kate Spade gap trade, Kate Spade opens $3.5 higher on good earnings. All of a sudden, the good earnings aren't good anymore. They're bad earnings. It comes down, penetrates the high of yesterday, at which point a sell trigger gets, goes into place, and then proceeds to collapse, reaches the two exact profit targets that are part of the system, and then the trade is over in two-thirds of the position, and the last third of the position carries a trailing stop in order to get the big move. So you have a rule-based strategy, where to buy, where to sell. You can find the gap higher opening by doing a scan right after the market opens, so you can see which trades have opened gap higher which stocks have opened gap lower, and then you can put in an order to buy or sell accordingly. Very simple strategy. How about other strategies? How about track record? You want to look at a track record? Here's the track record. You want to look at the best time of the year to do this particular trade? Well, that would be this time of the year. So not only do we know statistically, and aren't computers great, where to buy, where to sell, all of the track record, the complete history, the rules, what time of the year to trade, when to place the trade, all of the above. That's what I want to know. 
And I would say respectfully to anyone, if you can't give me that, don't give me anything. Because your opinion is going to be based on what kind of a day you had. Did you just have a bad lunch? Did you have a problem? Did you have indigestion? Did you have a fight at home? That's going to influence your opinion, but these facts don't influence the opinion because the opinion is a fact. So I use a trading model. My trading model is very simple. I have no fancy uh, visuals to show you with people kicking a football or anything like that. Trading model. Trading model is based on what I call setup, trigger, and follow through. thing that I can teach you today, five minutes and then go away. The trading model is the most important thing I can teach you. The trading model involves three aspects, setup, trigger, and follow through. A setup is a pattern. All market moves, futures, stocks, forex, are based on patterns. The pattern, there are many of them. The issue is finding the right pattern and we can find that through research. How do you do that? We've got computers with testing capability. If you think that prices go up because of a certain thing happening, a certain pattern, close greater than open, close less than open, you can go to the computer and you can test it and ask the question, how often has it happened and what has been the outcome? A pattern in and of itself needs a trigger. So while I can say that a key reversal is a specific find pattern with a rule, does a key reversal mean the market's going to go up or down? No, because once that pattern happens, I need a trigger. The trigger is a specific indicator that tells me, yes, um, whoever's got their microphone, their microphone on, if you could turn it off because I'm hearing all the background noise from whoever's office that is, thank you very much, appreciate that. Um, so the pattern needs a trigger. But that's only two-thirds of the struggle. I need follow-through. Most people believe that follow-through consists of placing the trade. It not only consists of placing the trade, but it consists of managing the risk. When people ask me what I do, they say, what do you do for a living, Jake? I say, I manage risk. Because if you're managing risk and you have a reasonably effective strategy that's statistically based and rule-based, you will make money in spite of yourself assuming that you begin with enough. Follow-through also consists of the most critical part that most people don't do, and that is maximizing the profit. Without a maximizing profit strategy, your goose is cooked. You will make the one or two hundred dollars a day, you'll be happy, you'll give it all back. You'll make a few hundred, you'll give it all back. I'm not in this to make two hundred bucks a day. I'm in this to make as much as I can every day. So. You can only do that with a profit maximizing strategy, even if it's a day trade. The shorter the time frame for a trade, the less money you're going to make, unless you compensate for that with position size. So would you rather sell one widget for a million dollars or a million widgets for one dollar? The choice is yours. Setup, trigger, follow through is a very important structure because it will help you learn from your losses as well as your profits. So. You can come back and you can look at this slide later. Let me show you the real stuff, the nitty-gritty. If we go to the computer and we ask them questions, one specific question, seasonality. Does seasonality exist in the markets? If you haven't read the book, The Behavior of Prices on Wall Street by Art Merrill, that is The Behavior of Prices on Wall Street by Art Merrill, do it. One of the best books ever written about the stock market. The book was out of print for a while, but I believe it's back in print. What Art Merrill did was really in incredible. He did something that in the 1950s nobody really did. He asked a question, show me the statistics. And one of the things that Art Merrill did was to demonstrate that prior to legal holidays in the United States, there was a pattern that was over 75% accurate, approximately 75% accurate, across the Dow Jones for many, many years. What he said was this, prior to legal holidays, specifically Labor Day, Fourth of July, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, so forth, by the Dow Jones on the close of trading, 
and get out on the day before. So for example, if Labor Day is on a Monday, you would buy on Thursday's clothes and get out on Friday's clothes. Very simple, completely rule-based. And what's so funny about it is, even though I've been teaching these rules for years, people still find a way to screw it up because unfortunately, there's some people in this business, believe it or not, I know this doesn't apply to anybody here, but believe it or not, some people just love to shoot themselves and make things extremely difficult. Let me give you an example. Seasonal tendency. The tendency for prices to move in a given direction at given times of the year. You enter a close on the you enter trade on the close of, of the market. You exit a trade on the close. Loss, a specific stop loss. You have an average profit where you reduce your risk of to lead to zero. And let me give you some massive history. If I go to seasonal trades, specific stocks, I use this kind of a pattern. I go to a searchable database of opportunities. I look for specific trades, and I use a risk management method to maximize my profit and minimize my loss. Let me give you an example. Let's take a look at the rules. The rules are, as I said before, prior to New Year's Day, Christmas, Easter, and by the way, this is a very short-term trade. I'm going to show you some other ones that are going to blow you away, provided I don't run over time, which I'm checking my time here. Yes, I can do that. So let me show you something. Here is the pre-Thanksgiving trade. So Thanksgiving is on a Thursday, except for the electronic market, the market is closed. The rule, buy on the close of trading Tuesday, get out on the close of trading Wednesday. Very simple. Over the last 62 years, probability of success 73%. Now mind you, 73% is not 100%. Can you use a filter? If you know good technical indicators such as momentum, not moving averages in the traditional way, but momentum, very simple indicator, also called rate of change. You can ask the question, if this market, and this applies specifically to the Dow Jones and the S&P, if the market is in an uptrend at this particular time, based on a specific momentum rule, will the trade be more probable to be successful? But even without Here's a 73% trade. The odds are really high in your favor. By doing a little research, you can determine what's your stop. You can determine an average profit per trade. But here's the funny thing. People will fill, still find a way to screw this up. They'll say, I think I'm going to buy it three days ahead of time. I think I'm not going to buy it because it's already been going up. I think I'm going to buy it on the opening instead of the close the previous day. I think I'm going to keep it after the trade is over because it's a winning trade. That's not the rule. And by the way, as I said, go through and study this trade, as I did, over the last 60 years and see for yourself. Here's the Good Friday trade. There's the track record. Here is the trade that's coming up. Labor Day, 62 years, okay, 70, 62, 62 trades, okay, 71% accuracy. I don't know what happened to this statistic. It should be more than four. It should, it should be a lot more and accuracy. So if you write me, I can give you the actual statistics. But the rule is very important. And Labor Day is a Monday. We know the rule. We know what to do. And you might say, well, 71%, that's not good enough for me. I'm concerned about the loss. There are many ways you can take this trade. You can take it in an option, at the money or in the money. You can take it, you can take it with the Dow Jones, the diamonds. You can take it with a proxy for the diamonds. You can take it with the S&P and so forth. But you know what? For a lot of people, this is too short term. Can we do better than that? Sure. I like to use these charts where I've taken all of the years of history for this specific market, in this case the S&P, and ask myself the question, what are the percentage odds for each month, each week, each day of the year? Do the odds show up or down? So you can see that as we get into the month of August, the last two weeks are showing 60 to 70 percent higher. But when we get into the months of November and December and we look at the graph, you can see that starting in mid-October to late October, that's when the market really takes off. We can look at it on an even smaller basis by going to the day of the week. And this is all done by computer. It's rule-based. I know my odds of up or down for every day of the week, for every day of the year. Where we don't have odds 
for example, second week, the third week of October, 57 percent. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the green arrows. I'm interested in the red arrows. They tell me where my highest probability of success will be. Can I do better than that? Can I get more specific? I sure can. I can go to this. One of the websites where I get my uh, information from is SeasonalTrader.com, of which I own part. I can go to SeasonalTrader.com, and for any stock, for any commodity that is located, that is uh, contained in the database, I can ask a question. Are there any trades that I can make for the month of January, February? Are there any trades I can make starting on certain dates that give me high odds of success? What stock or futures markets can I make those trades in? What if I want to search for a particular percentage accuracy or per particular profit to loss ratio? Is that doable? Yes, I can do that. I simply enter my search in here. Let's say I want to find trades 80% probability, profit to loss ratio 4 to 1, days in trade 25 or less, or 25 or more, whatever I want. I can do that and find the trades. And when I do that, I get something like this. So I'm about to show you <coughs> something that you may or may not want to believe. But here it is. Going back to the 1920s, and let me say one thing to you. Do you have anything in your repertoire that gives you a track record going back to the 1920s? If you don't, guess what? You can do that. We have the data. If you don't have the data, you can get the data. It's pretty straightforward. Do you have a track record for anything that you do? Do you know your odds of success? Well, let me show you something. Buying the Dow Jones on the close of trading October the 26th, since the 1920s, getting out on the close of trading January the 10th of the next year, has been profitable 83.5% of the time if you're willing to risk 15%, a close against you by 15%. Well, you may say you're not willing to risk that. If that's not the case, you can find trades with 9% risk. You can find trades with different odds with lower risk because it's all searchable on the computer. If you don't want to do this, you can develop your own program. But these are the interesting facts about this. It tells you whether to buy or sell. It tells you the exact date to get in and the date to get out. It tells you your average profit per trade, 176 Dow points, or 5.85%. It tells you your max consecutive winning trades, your max consecutive losing trades. And we can put this all on a graph and see the results, which is distinctly different than what you are going to find in this business. If you don't have the facts, it ain't going to work for you. And I hope I don't make any enemies here today. That's not my goal. My goal is to show you what I do and what I like to do. Okay? Very, very simple. And so let me show you something else. It not only tells you what to buy or sell, it tells you the time of day on the close of trading. We can also get out of the danger zone by taking the average profit per trade. The average profit per trade here, let me show you, is 5.85%. So if you put on this trade and it goes in your favor by 5.85%, 5.85%, you get out of part of your position you change your stop to break even and or a trailing stop. You now have no essential risk on this trade. Go back and look at the facts. Take a look at the track record. Now let's talk about track record. Back to 1928 of this particular procedure I just showed you. There's always going to be an excuse. You know, before I became a trader, I was in the psychology business and worked at a mental institution after I got out of college. I do the same kind of work now, but I get paid a lot better. The probability is that people will look at this and they'll say, I can't do it now. It's working too well. It's going to stop working because we've got a war in Iraq. We've got Afghanistan. We've got the Middle East. We've got Somali. We've got all this stuff that's going on. We've got a terrible president. You know what? If you go back since the 1920s, we have had every conceivable economy. We've had Democrats. We've had Republicans. We've had idiots. We've had inflation, we've had disinflation. We've had the number of wars. We've had bank failures. We've had an economic crisis. We've had everything, and this damn thing just keeps on going. It's not 100%. It's only 80-some percent. But what's the probability of something being correct 
over 80% of the time over all of these repetitions. Figure it out. So we're dealing with statistics here. No, they're not 100%, but you know what your risk is. You can mitigate that risk. You can say, I'm going to buy a long-dated call option. My risk is limited, the amount of the call option plus commission. I'm going to buy a leap or something of that nature. There's so many different ways to do this trade. You're not happy with this one? Well, here's one in the queues. October 25th through January 21st. Again, all the statistics. And the top trade here, 88% accuracy. Now, that 88% accuracy is due to the fact that we have less historical data in the triple queues. Take a look at the statistics. Look at the graph. Here's the graph. You can spin this graph any way you want. If you're an optimist, you're going to say, this is great, I'm going to bet the farm. Don't do that. If you're a pessimist, you're going to say, it can't keep on working. I'm not going to do that. I want to be a realist. I want to look at the data. You want to see the Dow Jones Transportation Index? The same trade since the 1950s. 85% accuracy. There's the track record. You want to look at a trade that starts in November. You say, you're not a long-term trader. You can't, you can't stand being in a trade from October, end of October till January. How about end of November? How about this one? S&P 500 futures. October 20th to January the 3rd, there's all your statistics. Max consecutive winners, max consecutive losers. This trade has never lost money more than two times in a row without coming back and making money the next time. There's the track record. How about another November start for the Dow Jones, the same trade. Here's the track record going back to the 1920s. How about you say, well, you can't stand to being in a trade from October. How about this one that starts in December? December 17th to January the 4th, 83% accuracy. You don't like what I've shown you? Well, there's a shorter term one. If you want to find trades with 10 days or less, probably 10 days or less holding period, you can do that. So, again, my point here is this. It's not the website. It's not that. It's the research. It's the probabilities. It's the rule-based procedure. It's the fact that seasonality is one of the easiest things you can do and it's one of the best things you can do. So you have many choices. You can make these trades in leaps, you can make it in the Dow, you can make it in the Qs, you can make it in options, you can do binary options, which is a great tool for, do, for doing these trades. But I want to say one thing more before I call it a day and let you guys go on to maybe bigger and better stuff. Here's what you want to do. Always ask yourself the question before you make a trade, what do I know? Ask yourself, what do I not know? If I know risk, if I know history, if I know entry and exit rules, if I know my first target, if I know my profit, type, my profit maximizing strategy, and if I timing, that's all I need. Timing, very simple. There are a lot of timing indicators out there. Spend some time and do some research. Most of them don't work, but you'll find a few gems. So you have a lot of choices. You have a lot of scenarios. And by the way, the seasonality that I've shown you here is not limited to the Dow. You've got seasonality in practically every stock, practically every futures market, every forex market, currencies, bonds. Somebody might say, well, why does seasonality happen? Mine is not to reason why. Mine is but to sell and buy. I like to tell people that seasonality happens because there is a God and God wants us to make money. I don't know any other reason. The bottom line is it works if you're consistent and if you follow the rules. So you can do it in so many different ways. If you're a really great trader, look at my ideas. Let me share yours with me. If you're a great trader, I will learn from you. If you're a good trader, look at what I showed you. It can, it can help you get better. If you're a bad trader, there's no doubt I can help you immensely. If you're a new struggling trader, before you lose your money, send me an email. Talk to me privately if you want to. I'll try to help you out. The bottom line is, as I said, if you're interested in what I do, Go to my website. Come see me in Hong Kong. I'm doing an, an exclusive uh, one-day workshop in Hong Kong on the 20th of September, my birthday. I've got some reports you may be interested in, but quite frankly, you don't need anything that I do if you embrace the ideas and do a little legwork. I do not subscribe to the belief that you need to have any, anyone professional help you. Yes, it may cut down on the learning curve immensely, but if you can't learn something objective from somebody, you don't need them. They're just going to confuse you. Please make sure it's rule-based. That's all I got for you guys. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to take them. Otherwise, you can send me your questions to jake at trade-futures.com or visit my website, jakebernstein.com.